There's a pretty one, Ulysses. Hello Booktube, I'm Sean the Book Maniac, welcome back to my channel. If you're here for a Friday Reads, I'm not doing one this week, I don't have enough to say to waste my time with nonsense like that. So instead I'm going to do my Reading Rush uh, Pile of Possibilities slash TBR for 2020. As everybody knows, it starts on July 20th, so I've got 10 days. So I thought I'd get my TBR up today, and um, first let me preface it with how possible or impossible this pile of possibilities might end up being. I am a judge, one of the many judges for the Booktube Prize semifinals round, and I have to have those books judged, read and judged, by the end of July. I'm in good shape now, so I'm thinking I can, in 10 more days, I can probably finish up with that. If I don't quite finish reading and reviewing the last three books that I'm working on, then that will abbreviate my participation in Reading Rush, and I suppose if, you know, I get hit by a bus and I'm in the hospital for the next 10 days, then I won't be able to do Reading Rush. I'll just be finishing up book two prize judging. So with that being said, I have quite a pile here, but I have chosen short books, which I like to do for the Booktubeathon, which now has a new name which I don't really like, and uh, here they are. I'm not in love with the prompts, but some of them are fun, and I'll show you which ones I'm ignoring and which ones I'm doing. Of course, there's a link to all the Reading Rush stuff in the show notes. The first challenge is read a book with a cover that matches the color of your birthstone. Well, I had to look it up, and it's Garnet. Gosh darn it. And Garnet, there's different shades, so I pretty much had free reign, but I have chosen... An Australian novel that I had, have been wanting to get to for quite some time. The Strays by Emily Bitto. Heard really good things about it. It's 2015 winner of the Stella Prize. Stella! So, I'm hoping to get to it for a reading rush. Oh, and I also should say that I am very much timing, scheduling adjacent with these readathons. I love them, but I don't care about finishing books during the 10-day period or whatever we've got. I will probably finish some of these books in November. Two, read a book that starts with the word the. So this one would count. So if I have to double up or choose, end up doubling up, I, I will. But the one that I've chosen because I really want to get to it and fits this prompt and none of the other prompts is... The Gifts of the Body by Rebecca Brown, and this is a collection of, I believe, linked short stories about a home care worker whose job it is to look after people living with AIDS back in the day. And Greg of Supposedly Fun, I think he counts this among as one of his very most favorite books. I had an autographed copy of the hardcover years ago, never got around to reading it, and because Greg is so enthusiastic about it, I got a copy again, and I'm hoping to get to it for Reading Rush. I think it was published in the 1990s or something, and it's supposed to be just amazing. Number three, read a book that inspired a movie you've already seen. Well, I'm probably going to skip this one, both because movies are stupid, and I haven't seen very many movies because they're stupid. <laughs> there was a couple that I considered, and if I can still figure out a way to do it, I might try to do it, but probably not. One is the novel We the Animals by Justin Torres. Eric Carl Anderson has been raving about it. I recently acquired an e-copy, and apparently it was made into a movie. But here in Tokyo, Japan, I cannot get any streaming access to it whatsoever. I just tried on Amazon UK Prime Video. That's one of the few places I found it streaming online, but once I entered a credit card that wasn't in the UK, they didn't want to talk to me at all. So probably just going to skip. But the other one is if I, I think this is on Netflix Japan, the movie, Kent Harif's, Harif rhymes with Sheriff, people, Kent Harif's Our Story at Night with Jane Fonda and some man whose name doesn't matter because Jane Fonda, um, that interests me. I haven't seen it, but I would be prepared if I could figure out a way I'd watch the movie first and then read this book, which has been sitting on my shelf. I've only ever read, uh, I think it was his debut, or was it just my debut to him? Plain Song, I think it was, which was marvelous. I'm not going to try to squeeze it in during Reading Rush unless I can find a way to watch the movie first. Kenji and I, my husband and I, we've had Netflix for much of the last three years, but we finally gave it up because we just don't like TV or movies that much. <laughs> Kenji likes to watch free stuff on YouTube, and so do I! So I might consider paying 10 bucks to get it for a month because I think this movie's on there, but it also is one more book I wouldn't be able to buy people. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'd love to make an irreverent TBR video. <laughs> Four, read the first book you touch. Well, this is what I did. I put a book on the shelf that I really am dying to read, and I closed my eyes and I touched it because, you know, I just am really gung-ho about this prompt. So the book that I touched that I'm dying to read is Derek Owusu's That Reminds Me which is a, I think, maybe autobiographical novel. I, I don't know much about it, other than that I've been hearing really good things about it. He was a co-host of the wonderful British Black Literary Podcast called, I think it was called Mostly Lit. I, I've actually forgotten what it was called. I loved it, but I didn't continue watching it after he left because he was the, the main attraction. I think this just recently won a literary award. I believe Eric Carl Anderson has read it. Or was going to read it, I can't remember. I don't read Eric's reviews of books that I want to read until after I've read them, so I can't remember if he's finished reading it, but I have been dying to get to it. It's short, so it's perfect for reading rush. A five, read a book completely out of your house. They got some blowback, or as they put it, feedback about this, but in a pandemic, it's maybe not a good idea to tell people to go outside. I wasn't planning to probably do it anyway, and I'm not going to do it, so. Six, read a book in a genre that you've always wanted to read more of. Well, this one is really tough for me because I'm not interested in reading any other genre other than literary fiction, people. Like, why? I'm a very busy person with all my literary fiction. But I occasionally have a good experience with nonfiction, and here is one. Blame it on Eric Carl Anderson that's been sitting on my shelf that uh, would foot the bill. It's Autobiographical Essays, The Unpunished Vice, A Life of Reading. And I believe it's essays in essay format, isn't it? No, it's just chapters. So it's his memoir as a reader. Uh, I'm not a big Edmund White fan. I gather from what I've heard Eric say, he's a very nice person, but I've never been in love with his writing. Uh, I'm, the idea of a memoir of reading doesn't really do much for me, so I'm predicting that you know, I should... Well, this reminds me of the, the fact that Eric's favorite book of maybe 2018 was Ian Lee's autobiographical essays about reading dear friend from I write to you in my life that one uh, and I bought it because he loved it but then I thought oh it doesn't sound like a Sean book I'm probably gonna hate it and it was it's one of my best reading experiences of my adult life so with that track record if Eric thinks this is great I'm gonna give it a try despite my misgivings it's not that long but it's small print and it's just over 200 pages and I just a memoir about reading really hmm okay we'll give it a try and the last prompt number seven is read a book that takes place on a different continent than you are well so uh, am I on a continent in Japan I guess so I'm on the Japanese continent or is this considered part of Eurasia I have no idea but anyway um, I have chosen a book that I've been dying to get to since I read this author's debut novel and that is Ngugi Wationggo's The River Between, his second novel. I acquired it more than a year ago. Then as far as last time I checked, Africa is on a different continent to wherever I have lived in my life. It's my third book by him, but it's my second novel. His debut was Weep Not Child, which I believe was about like 1948. And it's just stunning. It's one of the best African novels I've read. It's one of the best post-colonial novels I've read. It was just stunning. Weep Not Child, by the way, not 1948. He was, uh, Watayungo was only 10 years old, so I don't remember when it was published, but that was his debut. I know that, and this is, I'm pretty sure, his second novel, and it was published in 1965. I'm just dying to get to it. Okay, so that's my pile of possibilities. I probably will hate some of these books and bail early, and I might replace them with others, and there are several, if you've been paying attention, there are several of these that start with the letter the, so I could, you know, kill two birds with one stone. Looking at it from the perspective of books I want to read, I'm quite excited about this pile of possibilities, and let's see how it all pans out, shall we, boys and girls? Thanks for watching. <laughs> <laughs>